have an Antares 27. It's a new 2020 model with twin Mercury 200s. On here we have two 7,000 BTU Mabry units, 12 volt. I'll go in and show a little bit about this. Over here at the helm of this Antares 27, we have one vent up here. So this, you can have it blow straight anyways you're driving. You can turn it around. You can turn it to blow towards this heating area. In the meantime, we'll leave it here. Um, behind me, you're going to see two other displays. Right here, I have the Belmar, so this is where we're reading how much consumption we have from the, from the AC unit. Here, we're going to have the, uh, here's our inverter control. So this, this boat has the option for the 2000 watt true sound of inverter. So when we're disconnected from shore power, we have, um, we have air conditioning. Once again, not needed for the operation of the system. This, we're strictly using the charging capabilities of this, uh, of this inverter charger, as well as the fact that we're able to run uh, the outlets and the microwave while we're disconnected from shore power. When we come down here, so this, this access hatch is located beneath the um, beneath the steps down into the cabin uh, and once I'm finished going through the explanation I'll pull the camera out and we can see where we're facing but here we have two individual um, seacocks this is for both of the AC units this one here is for the salon unit this one here is for the cabin unit so you can follow it over here to the strainer this is for the cabin here's its dedicated pump. We have this system over here, which is the purging system. In case we do end up with air in the system, you're changing the strainer, you get air in, you take the boat out of the water, somehow the pump gets airlocked. You don't have to take this whole system apart. All you do is you open this valve here. We leave it long so that you can use put into a cup. If you just want to drain it into the bilge, we have a bilge pump right here that's also acceptable. And it's duplicated over here on this side. So this is for the salon unit. And once again, strainer, pump, um, here we have a fuse for the pump and then here we have the fuse for the second pump so if there's ever a situation it could be the fuse, um, different things to look at. Um, you want to check this filter, um, at first check it every time you go out then you'll get a bit of an idea as far as um, it, it'll stay pretty general, check it every week, check it every month. Um, depending on the use of the system. If you see it getting really dirty, you're going to take it off, you're going to clean it. Um, just being careful with this O-ring inside. That O-ring, if you lose it, you're going to have to order another one. Um, basket inside, it's plastic. Just be careful in tightening this back up. You want to make sure there's a groove for it to fit in the bottom and there's a groove on top for it to fit. So if you're trying to screw it on and it's not it's screwing on really, really difficultly, it's not getting onto the threads, well, the the um, the basket is probably not lined up, and if you muscle it in, you're probably going to end up breaking the basket. Now, if we come out of here, just to get an idea of where we are. So, just going over. So, we saw this vent over here. We do have a secondary vent down over here. Once again, rotatable. This is to blow towards this dinette area, seating area, um, foldable to a bed. Over here in this door, we have two breakers for both units. If you leave the boat for a period of time, turn these two off, it'll cut power to the unit completely. That way the control's not drawing power. I'll get the back opened up and show you some of the battery systems back there. Going into the F salon, we have the thermostat for the um, for the salon unit. So we have the mode that's the slice between cool mode, heat, and uh, and just fan only. We have the fan, so right now we're in automatic. We have these buttons to select up and down for the uh, for the temperature. So right now I have it set for 72. If you have any alarms, you'll have this this button will start flashing um, this blue and red. Here's the power button to turn the unit on and off. If we look at the inverter display, you'll see that I'm showing that I'm charging at 62 
0.7 amps, AC battery, the lithium bank is fully charged. We are connected to shore power right now. And what I'll do in a minute after showing you the other uh, batteries is going to be to show you um, everything disconnected. So then coming down into this aft compartment, I removed these two covers. And so here we have four 125 amp hour uh, lithium batteries. We have two more back here behind the, um, the engine house and the engine battery. Down over here we have our Sterling Power. These are the battery-to-battery the -battery chargers. The, um, the post where we're putting all the, uh, all the positive connections, that way we don't have all the connections on the battery to keep a nice clean installation. Here we have the um, Bluetooth device for the Belmar. Here we have two fuses they're the, uh, the mega fuses. This is for the DC to DC charger. So if the DC to DC charger isn't operating, um, you're not charging from your engine alternators. This would be, it would be these two fuses to check to make sure that these are still good. Here we have the Belmar uh, smart shunt. So this is what operates the screen to show us what kind of consumption we're looking at. And that's the majority of what we do have down over here. We also have a fuse over here on this side. But we have everything marked. So here we have the Belmar. So this is the fuse for the Belmar. We have the DC to DC charger for the starboard side. So this is connected to the starboard side battery. When that battery is being charged, this will start charging the lithium at a lithium charge rate. Same thing for the DC charger on the port side. And we have these A and L fuses right over here. So one for each of the DC to DC chargers, and then one for the for the inverter. So the inverter is located. right over here on the starboard side wall. If we come over here. Oh, it's not over here. What am I saying? I'm gonna turn off the main breaker to cut all power from shore. So that's an important note to know as well. You do have another, on the Atari 27, you have a breaker down over here. This can trip, so if this does trip, you're gonna have power at the shore power at the plug coming in, but you're not gonna have power to that panel that I just showed you back over there. We're going to drop 62 amps, 13.3 volts. Uh, we have the two, the two batteries in the back that we were just looking at. So engine battery, engine and house. We're showing 8.93 hours left. So this is before the battery depletes. If we look over on the inverter, we can see that grid input. I'm getting nothing in here. So there's nothing being put back into these batteries. Inverter is on. We can just tap this button here. It turns off when the unit's off. We tap it again, turns back on. So if you have any kind of error or anything that pops up, uh, low voltage protection, um, high voltage protection, what you do is you just tap this, turn it off, turn it back on again, and that will reset the, uh, the inverter start working again. If we want to turn off the inverter, the battery switch is right back over here. So this is the battery switch for the inverter charger. And we'll take a quick look at the forward control. So this is the control for the, for the cabin unit. Over up here we have the, uh, the vents for the forward cabin. 
looking here at the aft cabin. We have the vent over there on the starboard side. Also rotatable. We have the AC unit behind that door right there. So over here we can see the vents right over there. And then we have the secondary vent. And the unit's located behind that partition door right there. Here at the helm, I have both engines at 1100 RPMs. I have both units running and with a positive charge rate of 13 amps. So, this will show that we're charging through the engines. The batteries are a little bit weak right now, so I could get more out of this once the batteries are fully charged. But just in spite of doing the video, I just wanted to show that we could get to, we would be getting to a positive state of charge. And then, as soon as I back off my throttle so now I'm at 600 rpms and it's gonna slowly keep dropping right now it's showing <laughs> that I'm 8 volts, and then it's going to be dropping battery voltage, so eventually the uh, the DC-DC is going to cut off completely. And so now the DC-DCs have cut off completely, and so we can see that we're drawing 51 amps. So we were getting 50 amps from the alternators at 1100 RPMs, but once again, we can get more than that. It's just the particular configuration. The batteries are a little bit low right now. Um, they weren't fully charged when I started this test. The, the two AGM batteries so that's why this number is going to be fluctuating because I still need to charge those batteries.